Uh, you know, Luke Sana as well, too. I really don't think Vancouver has anything to be ashamed of. That's all. They got nothing to be ashamed of, and they got everything to gain from here on out for the rest of their season. So, uh, a tip of the hat to Vancouver. No matter how many times we may see each other, you know, this season, I don't even know what it officially is, but um, it's been fun, man. It's been fun. You know, you've had some, you've had some moments that really shook us up. Hey, you know, you deserved them. You deserved them. There's no weak team in this division, if you ask me. The Ottawa Senators were tied with the Montreal Canadiens right now before I came in here. You know? Like, there's no weak team in this division. Any team can win any night. For a single night, there's no there's no time off. There's no there's no easy games even, even in a situation like this, you know? Uh, did Toronto dominate? Yes, of course. But I'm saying it could have very easily gone the other way early on. All right? Now, how many people in the chat... David, maybe you can answer this. I don't know. How many people in the chat... Uh, think that the Muzzin call was weak. Let's talk about that one real, real real quick first. I enjoy the ref debates first, okay? So let's get to those. Let's get to those, okay? Who thinks that the Muzzin call was weak? The interference call. Huh? Huh? Where's the saying? Who's talking to? Is it? Oh, we do have Adam talking about some uh, Felino stuff. That's a great. We're going to get to that, of course. So if you think that the... Uh, Muzzin call was weak. I disagree with you. 110% every day of the week. That's just it. Uh, Muzzin completely tries to interfere or impede the progress of, as the ref book would say, they use words like that, yup. The, impede the progress of the player going by him. It doesn't matter if he lightly brushes them. It doesn't matter if he gives them a little of this or whatever like that. If you go, Muslim was skating down the ice towards the puck. If he turns out of his way and goes in for anything, for anything at that point, once he veers off the path of playing the puck and decides I'm going to impede the progress of the opposing player, the hand goes up, man. That's interference. That's interference all day, all day. He didn't have to do that. Just don't do it. Just don't do it. So, but I'm not even, I'm not even mad at him for doing it. Uh, I would probably try something like that, but the ref was looking right at him. So you tried something, Muzzin, and you got booked. Hey, it happens. So uh, I think even Muzzin would agree, you know, in the long run. He probably knows that's a call, but he was just like, I had to try something. Yeah, right on. So in the end, it really didn't matter at all, right? Now, who thought that the um, the hit on Tavares uh, was a penalty, right? Who thought the, that um, that little shot from behind on Tavares was a penalty, right? Because you know what I'm about to do. You know what I'm about to do. I'm about to say, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, Isabel brought that to the chat in the Discord, which was awesome. Thank you. Thank you for including us in that conversation. Uh, it was from a Twitter post where the person compared the two videos. The Muzzin interference and the Tavares uh, hit from behind thing, right? And talking about inconsistencies with refing okay so first i want to say that you could have called that a cross check yeah maybe it looked like a slip up of the feet more than anything to me yes there was contact but i don't think that's what uh, really sent them off i think Tavares tried to turn too quickly <sighs> he tried to turn too quickly and got shoved at the same time but it was more his own fault for trying to pull such a crazy move when he probably doesn't have the edge work to be able to nail that every time but but you could call it. You could call it a cross check. And I would say, yeah, okay. So that one's a little like on the line to me, right? Now, I'm glad that Isabel brought it to uh, to the chat because then we got to compare uh, like like the like the post on Twitter said, right? Which was inconsistencies with the refing. You can't compare those two. Uh, I mean, to, to, not to sound like an old guy by saying like you can't compare apples to oranges, but in this case, in this case, you can't you can't okay one's an interference call and one is a hit from behind or a cross check or a boarding call however you want to call that right those are two different rules you know there is a ref out there that believes the muzzin thing wasn't a penalty and thinks that the Tavares thing was there's a real ref out there in the nhl i bet you watching that tonight probably would have called that the opposite there's one that would have called them both a penalty and there's a ref out there that would have called neither one of them a penalty you see what i'm saying inconsistencies in the refing is not about, oh, that trip should have got called because that boarding caught called earlier. Those two have nothing to do with each other, okay? Are they going heavy on the boarding calls? Do they really, uh, you know, are they quick to call those across all boarding type situations? That's consistent, just like a trip. 
If a trip is called the same way every time there's a trip, it's consistent. Even if you disagree with what they're calling interference or what they're calling high sticking or you know what I mean? If a ref has, because every ref is going to have a different idea of what each individual rule is. There's no way to call it the exact same way. So each ref is going to have their own, their own, I, I do, you do, we all do. So if you thought that that hit from behind on Tavares was enough to call it, right? Then in your mind, every time you see that, whether it's Vancouver that does it or Toronto that does it, you have to be willing to say that's a call. But it doesn't mean that you wouldn't call the interference earlier or you would call. It has nothing to do with that. That's your interpretation of that rule now. You see what I'm saying? Now, there are consistencies that are a little extra. Sometimes a ref will favor the more uh, aggressive calls, the violent, you know what I mean? The roughing stuff or the cross checks and stuff because they want to see a grittier game. Maybe they're being told to put a grittier game on TV. Let's be real. It's a business. Um, and some might be saying, get rid of all that nonsense. I want to see goals tonight. I want to see, you know what I mean? Like, even if it's subconscious, there's a particular way they feel the game is played. And if they're not seeing that happen because they think that people are cheating or whatever like that, they're going to call it. Right? So refs are humans trying to make judgment on the fly cooks. Totally. Right? But their judgments are usually pretty consistent for each type of penalty. Now, we've also talked about the fact that you got two different refs out there and each one of them sees the game differently. You know what I mean? Each one of them sees the game differently. And they're trying to cooperate. That's even tougher. Because you've got an idea of what's interference. I've got an idea of what's interference. Now imagine if we had different opposing views and we're, all, we're refing the same game. It's not like the ref's manual gives you some sort of perspective that makes all refs think the same way. You know? It's very open to interpretation. The whole thing is. So they're constantly trying to, on the fly, or over years of experience, determine when something's a penalty and when it's not. So if you're going to compare inconsistencies, you got to show me two hits from behind. You got to show me two interference. Say, earlier you called that, here you didn't call that. What gives? Now you have a case. But when you show me, you know, a roughing call here and too many men on the ice over here, like that would have anything to do with each other. You know, I'm using that as an example because obviously that has nothing to do with each other. But no, get rid of that one and put in tripping instead. You know what I mean? So I had no problem with the refing tonight. It certainly was not the problem for anything um, on either side. Two penalties the whole game. That's a nice safe game, guys. Like, I know, uh, I know Halsey there got, got clipped in the face with the puck. That's going to smart. I think he'll be okay, though. So, I mean, unless you're talking about broken orbital bones and stuff, and that happens, right? But most of the time with stuff like that, it might be a busted up nose, might be missing teeth, you know? Might not even miss a game. Might have a cage on or something like that, but... Pucks to the face, man. They bleed a lot when it's an emergency. And they also bleed a lot when it's not. I've seen very superficial cuts to the lip or a, a tooth or whatever like that. Not even missing tooth, just a gums or something. You know, and it bleeds all over the ice. It looks gross. You're like, ah, he's dying. He's dying. Get him out of there. It turns out they just go, uh, you know what I mean? And off they go. Like, they'll get it fixed later by a dentist, but like, they're not, they're not bleeding everywhere necessarily. Um, and then other times it's way worse than you think. And like, there's been some injuries, man, in the NHL that look just as bad as that, maybe even worse. And like, Straight up, if a if a, a an emergency responder at the arena didn't act how they acted, that person would have died. You know what I mean? So it's pretty intense. It's pretty intense out there, you know. Uh, but overall, it was a pretty safe game tonight. I don't think there was really that much to call for refs. Uh, I mean, the goals in the Leafs end are beautiful. They're so much fun to watch. You know, they're so much fun to watch. Uh, the goal against Campbell didn't look bad at all, right? Like, um, well, you see him through like four different bodies. Maybe he could have had the angle covered a little better, but again, a rule of one for a backup goalie, right? A rule of one. So even if you wanted to say that was a weak goal, and I'm not, because I wouldn't, but even if you wanted to, he still gets his one. And that was it. Five to one. You know? How about how about Vancouver pulling the net with four minutes left and they're down by three goals already? Do you guys agree with that or not? I mean, you're down by three goals. Three goals. And you're going to pull the goalie then. Why? 
Why? Tell me in the chat if anyone believes that. And if not, that's okay. Maybe Vic does, maybe maybe Vic doesn't, you know? Maybe Mind Swagger does. I don't know. AKZ's in the house, you never know. Cooks and I usually see the same way on a lot of things, but you never know. We might disagree. It's a live event. Uh, Travis Green is trying to save our season. And Mind Swagger's saying it was kind of weird. So, you know, that goes to that whole... Um, there was a report done, and I'm going to do a whole video on this, guys. It's going to be on YouTube, and it's going to be sweet, okay? Nothing ventured, nothing gained, you guess, right? Okay, that's that's basically the attitude that mathematically gives you the best chance of winning. Mathematically, okay? <laughs> but it's like, it's it's so hard for me to explain, man. Um, they're saying that dude, you're already down by four, three. If you lose, it's no worse than being down by four. Even if you're down by two, right? They say that the you're supposed to pull the goalie with over six minutes left. If you're down by one goal, one goal they think is worth six minutes. You know, with your net pulled. Because if you lose by two, it's no worse than if you lose by one, right? Nothing ventured, nothing, nothing gained is kind of the mentality there. And I swear, mathematically, sure, maybe that works in terms of that you'll score more goals that way, right? But how many more games will you win doing that? I don't know, man. You would say you would think th theoretically that that would mean that you win the game or that you even tie it back up. But I don't know, man. I don't know. Sometimes, to me, that says you're giving up on the guys that are out there. You know, you're giving up on the guys that are out there because I don't think they're measuring the stat of how long do you have before the other team scores with an empty net. Because the research paper I saw, I didn't read it all yet, and I really want to go through it and do a video on this, okay? Um, but the research paper I saw that they're all basing this off of, pulling your goalie early, it was talking about the maximum chance of you scoring, right? Of you succeeding. But I didn't see much that mentioned of what's the chances of them succeeding. You know what I mean? Sometimes, especially if you're down two to one, two to one, you do not pull the goalie without, uh, with, with less than, uh, with more than two minutes on the clock. Two to one, I would say even wait till the last minute. I really would. I really would, because what you're trying to do at that point is you're trying to capitalize on a quick turnaround or something like that. You yank the goalie, now you've got six on five, they're caught by surprise, and you're running. Sure, you only got a minute left, but you know what? Make it happen, boys. Dig deep, all right? Put the put the grown, uh, the grown up pants on, get out there and score me a goal. Whatever happened to that, man? Whatever happened to that? Stats happened to that? Stats happened to that. Oh, statistically, we have no chance of scoring if we wait till a minute left. Screw that. Yes, you do. You've got stats. You can be the 10%. You can be the 1%. The fact that it happens at all means you got a chance. Okay, what you can't do is be out of the game with five minutes left. You know, three, one, four, one, five, one, five, one with three minutes left. Like, you're right, you had no better no better chance of winning now, right? But you could have, like, you could have had a better chance of at least tying it back up or something like that. I'm telling you, there's some, there's some tricky stuff with the math that they're doing there to try and get their thing. Which, by the way, a lot of these new stats, if you find out, they're published and released through a lot of sports gambling related sites. I mean, right? Right? When you're going to put your money down on, on a sporting event, isn't it nice to know what an XGA is? Because that sounds like you've got the inside scoop and you're going to bet, right? When, when if you just know what goals against are and that's it, you just, you know, you're supposed to feel like that's a coin toss. Advanced stats are being published by gambling websites, you know, because they don't care which side of the thing you bet on. They just want you betting, you know, that's what they do. They get their cut no matter what. You know, whether this team is winning or that team's winning, the fact that over the all the games that they put out there, as long as as long as you're gambling through them rather than through that company or that company, they're making their money. So if they give you some sort of inside stats to make you feel like, oh, I got this game on lock. This is for sure. Let's go. Two G's down tonight. Let's go. And guys do that. There are people out there that do that. Doesn't XGA sound very pretty? Maybe I should just cut that part out and make that a video against it, man. <laughs> uh, so I don't buy it. I think Vancouver should have hung in there. I, I think they should have hung in there for a little bit longer. If your boys don't earn, that's to me, that's what it was, right? Like a, a, As a coach, 
You're rewarding the players by saying, I believe that by pulling a man right now, we can still get this done, you know? But you gotta have a team that's willing to show you, we're gonna go hard to the end and not depend on the coach to save us with a move like that. If you see the heart and you see the skill and you're like, these guys have a real chance if I pull the goalie now, whenever that happens, sure, pull them, even if it is six minutes. If you truly believe the boys got it, they can do it, they can get this done with six minutes left, pull that goalie, dude, right? But if you're doing it because somebody with a calculator told you that you should, when your boys are playing like absolute dog crap, you know what I mean? You're supposed to send them out there with no goalie for a fifth goal? I don't know, man. I don't know. I'm just a guy in my basement, guys. I'm just a guy in my basement. And you're the lovely people on Twi uh, Twitch that join me for these live streams. I always forget the name. <laughs> Twitch. It's been almost a year. I still can't remember to say Twitch. I always want to say Twitter. It's weird. But yeah, there it is. All you lovely people that come out and support this and you're part of the chat. You're talking to each other and you're talking to me. I always want to hear what you have to say as well, too, before we go anywhere. Okay? So that's what I'm saying about the game. There really wasn't much to talk about other than the things I did. So I just kind of rambled about them. It's another win. On the way to the playoffs, go Leafs go, right? So now I want to see what y'all are saying, okay? You've been patient. You've been waiting long enough. It's time, right, Cooks?